holy, holy, like no other name, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Saying it. That Yahweh is our salvation. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. If you are new here, my name is Josh. Welcome, the senior pastor. And we are excited as we, uh, we say that specifically because we are going into a new series of Sheep on Mission starting this morning. There is something happening, and I hope you all can feel it, church, but as we were talking as elders even yesterday, there is an excitement, there is, there is an understanding, even just look at the cover of your bulletins. Like, I, I love the green pop, all right? I love the green pop even behind the sheep there. It's a time of bringing new life. It's a time of unlocking. It's a time of the harvest. Amen? Amen? I'm excited. It's a good season. And so as we come out of following Jesus together through the Gospel of Mark, we are going to look ahead to this season as he sends us out as sheep on mission. Amen? All right, so open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 9. I'm going to be reading from the NIV today. And here's the passage. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Lord, we receive this as your word for us. Thank you for the Holy Scriptures, Lord. Prepare our minds and hearts today to receive from you. Lord, let us be trained, encouraged, rebuked, corrected, built up, equipped, for the work that you have for us, through your holy word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Sheep on mission. Transitioning from following Jesus together to sheep on mission. Pretty subtle transition there. But that was one of the things we heard from the Spirit. Let's keep going. This idea of going together, of being connected. Connected to one another. Committed to one another. And commissioned to one another, to go out this summer. Do you know this sheep is the most noted animal in the Bible? The word sheep occurs about 570 times in Scripture. Now sometimes it's just talking about the animal itself. But when you combine sheep with flocks, pastures, pastors, pastors and, and shepherds and all these things together, you're talking about, about 700 references to sheep and the shepherd in Scripture. It's pretty important. It's a pretty important thing to understand, to take hold of. It's throughout Scripture, Old Testament and New Testament, from Genesis all the way to Revelation. And so we're going to be going into that and looking at this relationship between sheep and shepherd. Sheep were a key component to a nomadic people. That means they are traveling. As we are traveling through life, we travel together as a flock. As a flock. Now, traveling requires a long-term obedience. Obedience. Something we may not be necessarily good at. <laughs> but we need a long-term because we have a common destination and we're following the same shepherd. It's amazing as I looked into this sheep thing, all sorts of commentaries and suggestions about why sheep, and let's look at aspects of sheep. So many are negative. I was astounded about all the Bible studies to do and how we're so bad. Do you know what the key component of sheep is? They need a shepherd. Which means the more we look at being sheep, the more we should look at our shepherd. Do you hear that? Sheep without a shepherd are lost, defenseless, helpless. Sheep with a shepherd are valued, have purpose, have direction, have protection. Do you see how that flips the whole script? Sheep with a shepherd 
We need a shepherd. Our identity is not found in our weaknesses, but in our relationship with God. Our very identity is in our relationship with him. Eugene Peterson said it this way, Do you think the way to tell the story of the Christian journey is to describe its trials and tribulations? It is not. It is to name and describe God who preserves, accompanies, and rules us. Our identity as sheep starts with, Lord, have mercy. Who knows a singer who used to say that all the time? Have mercy. John's laughing. Who is it, John? That's our, I, I got, I, I, there you go. It's Elvis, right? All right, so everybody one time, all right, he, he, let me hear your best Elvis impression. Lord, have mercy. Ready? One, two, three. Lord, have mercy. Does he have any idea what he was talking about? Have mercy. We are not perfect. I got news for you, church. The world is not perfect. Is our message, fix it? Get yourself fixed? We better be fixed? Or the world has no hope? No. It's have mercy. Have mercy. Can anybody think of people who hurt each other out there? Anybody think who's, are there people out there in your lives who don't have direction? Anybody in your families who's disobedient? Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, I say to myself. The Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. His mercies are new every morning. This is from Lamentations. Every morning, every morning, this, this need for mercy. How lost are we without him? How lost is the world without him? How much do we desperately need him? Can you see it? Can you see the need for mercy? I think mercy is an important one because we talk a lot about grace. Grace. But we miss mercy to get there. We talk a lot about compassion because it's the emotion that can drive us to have graceful acts. But mercy's there first. Mercy is, can you see someone who deserves punishment? Can you? All those questions I just asked. Now, can you forgive them? Can you not give them judgment but have mercy. This is a key component of taking every thought captive. When you see someone, when someone offends you, when you see evil in the world, what is our first reaction? Take that thought captive to mercy. We need it badly. Let me give you a demonstration. I need, a, I need a, a, someone to help me out. Can I get maybe a small person? Any kid want to come help me out? Come on up, Carly. Come on up. All right. Do you see this, this big bucket? <laughs> All right. Do you, see, do you see what's in here? Carly, you can come too. Come on. You can do it too. You can. What's in there? Water. Water. Is there a little bit of water or a lot of water? A lot. A lot of water. What do you think, Carly? A little or a lot? A lot. A lot. All right. How about compared to this? Is this a little or a lot? A lot. Okay, you guys can come right around front here, kind of thing. I am not going to dump it on you. I promise. I promise. I'm not going to dump it on you. This is you. All right? So everyone just, just saying here in, in the church right now, they said, we need mercy. Now, I used a lot of questions about other people, but can you also think of how we need mercy? How me personally, sometimes I get lost. Sometimes I get disobedient. Sometimes I get angry. And I need mercy. See, I start empty. I need to be filled. I need, I need to have a source of mercy. Because in my ability, I have a very small capacity for mercy. I am a limited human being, right? Now even, let me give you a tool 
to get some more mercy. You can get mercy right here. This is God's mercy. Can you take those? Can you, can you give your, give, fill up that bucket there? Let's, let's see you give yourself mercy. Draw from the source. It's going to take a while, isn't it? It's going to take a while. Now, that's good. Now, look at that. Is that, is that a lot of mercy? No. No. It could get poured out pretty easily, couldn't it? Mm-hmm. Maybe one interaction in your day, and you're emptied out of mercy. What would be a better way to get more mercy? We could pour it into the little bucket. Absolutely. You know what's even better? And I can absolutely pour, pour it in there. But there's so much of it, isn't there? What if I did this? How quick did that happen? How wonderful is that? Very. Yes, absolutely. And now we're filled up with mercy. See, we start with lacking mercy, and then God can pour out, or we can go into his presence and get filled up with mercy. Either way would work. Good job, guys. You can sit down. Well done. Well done. Good job. His mercy is new every morning, and he provides for us. See, first we recognize the need, and then we meet the one. Look at Jesus here. He went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. Synagogues, that's the community center where they, they, stu- they studied the word of God. The towns, the villages, everywhere he went, he saw people who needed mercy, who were off track, who did not have a shepherd. This is the creator of the universe. His first thought could have been, this is exactly what they deserve. But it wasn't. Instead, it says he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. The provision of the shepherd. Have you ever seen those shots of sheep that go without a shepherd for too long? I'm doing this because they're just covered in wool. So much so that sometimes they can't move. There are stories of sheep being found in gutters on their backs. They can't move. Of being shorn 70 pounds worth of wool taken off of them without a shepherd. And you see them, the life that it gives to them. Look at that. The difference, the burden of not having a shepherd and then being freed under the gift of shepherded, shepherding. His mercies are new every morning, the provision of a shepherd. And we have this good shepherd here because our first instinct is just to follow those around us, right? Right? That's really easy to do. Just follow us around us. So the, she- the, the sheep could try to get instincts from the inside, but you saw that, just off on their own. They just get burdened down. And sometimes they follow each other. Here's a wonderful news story. In eastern Turkey, about 1,500 sheep who were left unattended fell off a cliff. Fell off a cliff while the shepherds were eating breakfast. The first 400 fell to their death. The remaining 1,100 were saved because the first 400 broke their fall. We, they just kept on following those around them even when it led to destruction. Without a shepherd, they just follow those around them even if the one before went off a cliff. It's, that's where I'm supposed to go. How many people here have had their parents tell them, if your friend told you to jump off a cliff, would you? We do. Without a shepherd, we will follow the crowd right off a cliff. This is humanity. This is reality. In fact, (laughs) what they found happened when studying sheep, it says the sheep in back couldn't see past the sheep in front, so they were unaware of what was ahead. The sheep in front couldn't stop because the sheep in back we're pushing them forward. Once you get to the edge of the cliff, sometimes there's no option. Unless a shepherd comes to rescue us. 
Shepherds knew every morning. And from the beginning, do you know? If I would have said this, it would have been bad. But I could have said that this was a, a sermon about the oldest profession. In the Bible, the oldest profession is pastoring. Genesis 4.2. The oldest profession mentioned, the oldest vocation, what we could do with our lives is pastoring. To be a pastor, to be a, a shepherd. In Genesis 4.2, it's mentioned. It's all the way through, and even some of the promises of the Old Testament, I will provide pastors, shepherds for my people. Moses wasn't a prophet first. He had training in shepherding. David wasn't a king first. He had training in shepherding. This is an important part of it, that we not only see the good shepherd, but we take on those attributes. Being a shepherd, I am so thankful that through the seasons of my life, I have been provided with shepherds. Now, in my whole life, I, I don't remember a time that I didn't know Jesus was God and know him as a shepherd. But when I was young, I had my parents to shepherd me. When I first came back, after a decade away, and I did the internship, I had Steve and I had Jim to shepherd me there. As I went into pastoring and, and shepherding, I had others as well. And even in that transition, someone who is incredibly meaningful to me to this day. Because one of the beautiful things is not only being pastored, but being raised and matured, and some of these pastors then become friends. But in my transition from being an intern to being a full-time minister to all of the really difficult decisions like actually pursuing my wife, it was Jeff Sponsler who pastored me. And it meant the world to me. And still does. And now we're friends and brothers, as we were then. But we still get to be, this is the long obedience that I'm talking about, church. This is the long reward that comes from working and ministering together. And now, as a senior pastor, and even occasionally pastoring other pastors, I still have Alan. He's my apostle, my friend, my covering. And I'm excited, church, because it's been too long since you have been able to hear from him. But he and his wife, Betty, are coming here at the end of May, on May 22nd, to be able to preach. And you'll hear from him. Yeah, you can applaud. I'm excited. He is my dear friend. And I talk to him weekly, but I'm excited for you to hear, to be encouraged by him as well. His mercies are new every morning, and he provides shepherds for us in every season of life. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest. Do you see this? Jesus goes right from having compassion on the crowds to sending out workers. See, first we recognize the need for a shepherd, then we meet the shepherd, and then we are fed and sent. So we had a need for mercy. We were filled with mercy. But now the question is, will we be merciful? Will we be merciful? Just as Carly wanted to do with pouring the bucket and having it go, I could have overflowed it, couldn't I? That's exactly the design. That these are consistently just poured like this. Constantly pouring in. I need three more helpers up here. Three more helpers. Come on up. Three more helpers. All right. Come right over here. Miss Amber is going to help you. I need one more helper. Miss Amber is, is going to be the, the lead helper here. There we go. All right. All right. You guys are going to go right over here. You can help too. Come on up. Okay. So here's the thing. Here's the thing that I'm talking about. This, this seed of mercy that can then be planted, that mercy that poured out fills us up. I know I'm mixing metaphors. It's okay. So does Jesus here in this past, right? So does the word, right? We're talking about shepherds, and then we're talking about harvests here, okay? So this water poured out fills us up, but it also embeds something deep inside of us. There's the seed of the kingdom. There's a seed of the kingdom. Now, this seed of the kingdom is taken and planted in our life. And if it continues to get watered, it will grow. So what they're going to do are, are take seeds from the sower and plant them in their lives. 
Now, you may know exactly how this works. I understand that. But sometimes it just takes doing something a little bit differently or saying some basic truths in a new way to really plant it deep. Amen? Don't move past mercy. Just focus on mercy this morning. The mercy of God to send a shepherd for us. So as this seed is planted deeply, it still does need something else to grow, doesn't it? What does it need? Water. Water. So where are we going to get the water from? What God has poured out onto us. All right? So you guys take that. You can take your pipettes there. Well, you you guys can share them. You guys can share them. Now... I had one, two helpers with the first one. Now look at the multiplication of this next one. And we have seeds for days, guys. We have so many seeds that could grow. See, when we come together as a flock, it multiplies exponentially the amount of effectiveness they have, that we have, the amount of mercy that can get poured out on this world. Does the world need mercy? Yes. So we need all hands on deck, church. We need everyone. Good job here. Now, they are doing this, but again, I'm going to point out, this is not about a momentary experience. This is about a life of mercy, a life lived out. So here are these seeds. Now, everybody, hold on one second. Everybody who just did that, take your planter back to your parents right now, back to your families. Take your planter back to your families. There you go. Because that's really the first place. We take this mercy back to our homes, don't we? That's the first place where we take it. So now they're going to take these back to their homes. And then come on back up, guys, once, once you do that. Um, there you go. There you go. Now come back up. All right. Excellent work. So they take mercy home. Then we come back together. And guess what? They've already prepared all these other planters ready to go. Now. Everybody take another one. Who in this church needs mercy? All right. Someone with a hand up, take one of these to them. All right? See, this is the first place where we are on mission, church, is right here. Sunday mornings. We are on mission to encourage one another, to build one another up, to find what's going on in our workplaces and our lives, to pray over one another. Amen? Amen? Well done. All right, well done, Amber. Well done. (laughs) Seeing how he provides for that need reveals more of, oh, thank you very much. I do need mercy. Reveals of who he is, and then we grow in relationship with him. We're planting the seeds of the kingdom to grow long term. Now, I mean this. So everyone, raise your hand if you have a planter now. Raise your hand. All right. It is May 1st. On June 1st, if you show me a picture of something growing in there, there will be a reward. We, yeah, absolutely, it counts for you. Yes. Uh, sometimes kids get the exception. You know that actually shepherding was passed to kids first? It was so important. They often wouldn't allow the help in the ancient world, it would be the kids who would take on shepherding in the fields because it was so important. Now think about that with God, that he passes on this shepherding to us. When we commit our lives to following Jesus, we should not expect our part to be over in an instant, but a lifetime. Don't we commit our lives to following Jesus? So commit to a lifetime of pouring out mercy of growing in mercy. His work for our salvation is finished, but our work to share his good news is every day, church. Seeing that we are supplied this unbelievable, boundless supply, and this is a teeny tiny bucket. God's mercy is an ocean. You can never draw enough mercy. It's an ocean. Seeing that we are supplied, we are freed and equipped 
to share what we've been given. We come and recognize our need for a shepherd. Receive the shepherd. Receive the mercy of God first. Then you can share it with others. And we go out together. Why? Because ours is a relationship wrapped in a revelation. The reason why we know one another is because of the work of Christ. Therefore, everywhere we go as these bouncy, happy sheep, it doesn't have to be happy, but as, as sheep, everywhere we go together, we are embodying the good news. That Jesus broke his body to make us one body. That Jesus poured out his blood to wash us clean. That Jesus brought us together as a flock and we follow him together. Ours is a relationship wrapped up in a revelation to co-labor with God in the work of restoration. Doesn't that sound good? Sometimes we might come and say, yeah, but I was just newly clipped. I'm one of those sheep who I just let go of 70 pounds and I can't even move. Go look at some of the videos. Watch out for ads, but go look at some of the videos sometimes and see these sheep and the first thing they do is they find the rest of the sheep and they just rest because sometimes their legs aren't even strong enough to hold them up. They put their legs on one another. Sometimes we come to Christ so broken that we think we're not useful at all, but look at even that message of leaning on one another. Elizabeth Elliot, who was the wife of a missionary who gave his life to the mission, said it this way, If my life is broken when given to Jesus, it may be because pieces will feed a multitude when a loaf would have only satisfied a little boy. We come together to minister together, to build up one another. And there's an opportunity to share even this week, this Thursday, at 6.30, we're going to come together for another pie night to talk about opportunities of going out as sheep on mission this summer. We're going to be sharing what God is doing and we're also going to be participating in what God is doing there. Not only in our gathering together and fellowshipping together, but we're going to have a baptism church. We're going to have a baptism church. Can I point you out? John Angel is going to get baptized this, this, this Thursday night. He's excited to share. Amen. I'm excited for you to hear from him. Some of you, I'm sure, have met him already. But I want to say this as well. If you have not been baptized and confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and gone under the water to be raised again to devote your life to Christ, talk to us. This Thursday, there's an opportunity to get baptized. But I am excited for this. But we are also then going to pray over those opportunities for the summer. So we are going to share what God is doing participate in God, what God is doing, and pray for what God is doing. Does that sound good? That's this Thursday night at 6.30. Next Sunday, let me give you another opportunity. Just in case you're boiling over with mercy right now. And you're like, you know what? Maybe is there someone, God, that maybe I will never see in my lifetime who deserves mercy? Can I have an opportunity just to show mercy in a new way? Yes. Next Sunday, the old hoffs are going to lead us in Compassion Sunday. Compassion is an opportunity to sponsor a child in need, to be fed, to see the crowds that are out there, and to have compassion on them. There's an opportunity next Sunday. I ask you to prayfully consider sponsoring a child next Sunday. This journey we're on is important, church. We encounter the same world as everybody else. We're not immediately raptured into heaven. We still deal with gas prices, inflation, all of the troubles, trials, all of the winds and waves. We deal with all of that, but we have a kingdom perspective. As we engage with all these things, the world gets to see how faithful God is. As we speak with hope and optimism, because our eternity is secure, the world gets to hear what true hope and secured hope sounds like. Every moment we live out has purpose in exposing the reality of heaven on earth. We are in the midst of the same circumstances, but our relationships have been wrapped up in this revelation. We engage with a kingdom perspective, with one another in covenant relationships.
So we go out and we share the mercy of God. How do we do it? How do we do it? How do we do it, sheep? How can we possibly learn how to do this? Keep your eyes on the shepherd. Don't look anywhere else. Keep your eyes on the shepherd. Look at Jesus in this passage. As he was going, he saw the need as an opportunity to give mercy rather than judgment. To move with compassion and then pray. The world is not perfect. We are not perfect. We have a perfect calling from a good shepherd. Can we stand? As we go out throughout this series, we are going to be looking at sheep on mission and seeing, first of all, recognizing our need for a shepherd, how the shepherd provides for that need, and then how we can share that provision with others. So I want to pray right now, because as we go out together, look around this room. Look around your rooms at home. Everyone that God joins to you is meant to enhance your ministry. All the people in this room enhance who we are. We come to Jesus as individuals, but we grow together. We also go together. Amen? So, Lord, I pray for this church. Lord, that they would receive this calling to be connected, committed, and commissioned as they go out. Lord, will you give us eyes to see the need for mercy, to pour out your mercies on us daily, Lord, that we might have the strength to share that mercy with others. Lord, for everyone here who does not know your mercy, Holy Spirit, move in them right now to understand, to receive your mercy on their lives. Lord, for this church, will you bless them, build them, send them, and let us go together as we are led by you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church.